Yeah. But if I do tie here, you'll have a great video of it. <laughs> you see that? I'm Jon from the Rekka Grapevine. Today we're gonna hike Essien or run Essien or speed jog Essien or whatever you want. Uh, Essien is the, the mountain that everybody sees from Reykjavik. It dominates the skyline, not because it's that particularly tall, it's only like 900 meters or 3,000 feet, but uh, because it's so wide. It's the most popular mountain to hike in Iceland, and uh, even in horrible weather, you'll see people hiking it or running it all through the year. And now it's, uh, it's late winter. I don't know how many cars are here. I don't know, 20, 30, 40. A bunch of people are hiking it. And uh, it's popular because it's convenient. It's only about 10 kilometers from the city center. You can even take a bus to get here. So you'll see all sorts of people here. And uh, if you're from here, you're Probably gonna run into somebody you're familiar with. Essen is a pretty weird name actually for a mountain. Uh, most of the Icelandic mountains have kind of descriptive names, but this one seems particularly weird in that sense, like the famous Eyjafjallajökull. That thing just means Eyja means island, Fjall means mountain. Jökull means glacier, it's kind of descriptive. This Essen doesn't really have a meaning in modern Icelandic. So people often thought it was like Gaelic or something. Uh, but that's probably not true, it's probably just... Dain. Probably just one of these words and we forgot what they mean. Uh, so it's probably... What has been said is probably something like... Uh, it has something to do with smithies and metal work. Don't really know why, but maybe, maybe because it has like a flat top and looks like an anvil or something, who knows. But anyway, we're just gonna go for it. See you at the top. Yeah, I see you. I see you there. Hi, Art. It's too slippery for me to get to the top. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would have to wear uh, glacial, sp uh, like glacier spikes. I can try, but it's, um, yeah. Yeah, okay, fuck it, I'll, I'll go there. Hi, right. I'm at the top. Oh, there you are. Hi, Art. What's up? Here's the post. Is this acceptable behavior?
All right, we're at the top. The view is excellent. We're looking at the whole city of Reykjavik. Disputable whether or not that's a good view to begin with, but here it is. We see the ocean, we see the boats on the ocean, we see the islands and the fjord, we see all of the mountains of the Reykjavik Peninsula, snow on top. It's excellent. This is why this is why people hike. This is to be it's for the view, it's for the dopamine, it's for the uh, closest to nature, it's for the divine everything. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm, I am, I am looking at Drake Egg, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's very sort of like, uh, it's very much the Reykjavik we know, all know what. It has houses, it has uh, streets, it has people living in it, it has bad city planning, it has horrible trans public transport systems and uh, just in general somebody really fucked up when they came after this thing. It's also sitting on a fisher area, so there might be an eruption here. What are we going to do about that? Where are we going to move then? To Vide? To Akureyri? Eilstad? Is this it? Do you mean something like this? Still talking. I guess I could say these things again if you want me to. Here's the excellent view. Blah, blah, blah. Ah. Anyway. Uh, what are the five? No, oh, never mind. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're still running on that same pattern. That's pretty impressive. Isn't it? Uh, do you mind if I start trying to get down? So I was hoping to go there because it... Yeah, okay. F it. I'll, I'll go there. Well, I can I can try to make it work, but uh, it's very f slippery. Yeah, like there's very very little preventing me from getting. Absolutely f here. I don't know if you can if you can tell. Ah. Holy f Well, I'll we'll try something else instead. Okay, it's getting here. Might not die yet. Yeah, but he was wearing proper, proper gear. Uh, yeah. I think I am. Yeah. But if I do die here, you'll have a great video of it. <laughs> you see that? Ah, f yeah. No, no, I'll do it. I'll do it here.
just don't just tell people not to do this at home. <laughs> right? I think so. Okay, you can see what I'm doing, or all right. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Did I get spare swim it? Well, it's not really. What kind of crampons are you wearing? Don't have yeah, don't do it. Yeah. A what? I said I'm this close. I just want to reach this rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't go further. I think you'll find yourself at the risk of losing all contact and slip until you hit something. Sure. I was okay with this face because I'll just go flat. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. But, uh, yeah, I. I you, you could probably make it, but it's not probably a very good idea. Yeah, but oh, shit. I left my pride back in my 20s. <laughs> Good for you. Same here, but uh Look at I, you in, in sneakers. Yeah, of course. Wow. Uh but I'm wearing No, no, yes, that helps. Yeah, but it's not uh, they're not uh waterproof. No, nah, that's fine. As long as you don't cool down, but this is not long enough to keep you in it. Yeah. safe. Cuz it's just like this mixture of Pretty solid and not that solid. Exactly. Do you want to borrow my crampons or? Are you here for that long? <laughs> I don't know. I have a phone number. You can drop them off in Rick if you want. That would be a huge blessing. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you have a phone on you? I do. Just take my number. Call me. What's your name? I'm, I'm John, basically, or Jon. Jon? Jon, like... Uh, John? It doesn't matter, actually. I'm, I'm not really picky. Yeah, you, do you know how to slip these long, things on? Yeah. All right, then I you should be good. Buns, I just didn't have yeah, of course. Them on yeah. The strip. So I'm gonna just gonna slip off the other crampon. But uh, like I like I warned you, they're not gonna. They're you know. Yeah, they're thin. They're thin and they are. They're better than nothing. But it's not the right set of teeth for this yeah. steak. But some teeth are better than gums. Yeah, that's uh, that's in true. Uh, that's true indeed. Oh, okay. I guess my. I guess my. Uh, Garmin decided to call me in with a heart attack. They do that. All right, Dart. I'm gonna head back down. Good luck. Uh, yeah, you're not that far away from it. Just no, you're like I don't know, uh, 200 feet or something. And uh, the view is great. You won't get much more than this, but it's still pretty nice. I'll call you. Well, nice to meet you. I hope you make it up. Don't don't break anything on the way down. All right. Take care. Okay, Art. Are you with me? Yeah. Thanks. Woo! Ugh. 
Oh, está bien. We're back at the parking lot. We're done with the hike. I hope you liked it. Um, I liked it, but I was a little scared at some point of the hike. So I wasn't expecting the, the snow to be so difficult for the rest of the, 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 the last part of the hike, but uh, that's what we got. But it brings us to the issue of safety, which is very important when you're hiking in Iceland. First of all, the weather in Iceland is very unpredictable, so you always have to check the weather forecast before you go anywhere. The weather above, like three, four, or five hundred meters, can be even worse and more more unpredictable, and that's what we did today. So you have to maybe be very mindful of that, even if it's the summer. You know, it's it's not even necessarily safe then. You also have to tell somebody when you're going and when you're coming back, in case something happens. If you're on like a pretty frequented mountain like Essen here, and you're on the path, obviously there's probably going to be somebody here who uh, sees you if you fall down or have any issues so you should be fine but even if you trail off a little bit you're not gonna necessarily see anybody and if you have an incident and nobody knows about you over there nobody's gonna find you unless you have a way to communicate with the outside world so bring a phone and don't break it uh, this hike was about three kilometers to the so-called state and then another 500 meters to the top um, for the first three, kil three, three kilometers which is the part that most people just are are happy to do and, and no more to the so-called state or stone or rock. Uh, the, there wasn't really much requirement for any particular shoes or anything. It was just fine. Uh, after that, you would have I would have needed better crampons than the ones I had. They weren't really sufficient for the task. And it got a lot colder. You have to be mindful of what you wear when you do these hikes. If you're, if you're like taking the jogging approach, which I was doing, it's really good to just wear stuff like I'm wearing now, these excellent 66 degrees north uh, Gore-Tex pants and a jacket and an inner layer, and then gloves and, and a hat. If you're going any slower than that, you would obviously have to dress accordingly. Um, yeah, I, I guess it's also fair to point out that uh, unless you're quite used to, well, I'm not going to call this mountaineering, but sort of trail running or mountain running, you should probably not attempt to hike the last part of this mountain as it is right now. And you can see on the video why. I wasn't really comfortable with what I was doing from, from time to time. But yeah, it was fun. Uh, be mindful of these safety issues. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.